Today we shall talk about stomas. Very simple but very important topic, especially for the exams. What is a stoma? A stoma is a surgically created opening in the body between the skin and the viscous. The abdominal stomas are mainly used to divert feces or urine from to the outside of the body where it can be collected and discarded. There are three types of stomas commonly colostomy, ileostomy, and neurostomy. An ostomy is a surgically created opening in the body for elimination of body waste. After the ostomy is created, you will expel stool through a stoma. A stoma is a part of the small or large intestine that protrudes or sticks out of your abdominal wall. The size of the stoma and exactly where the stoma is located on your abdomen depends on your specific operation and the shape of your abdomen. Important information about stomas. There are some other important things to know about stomas. Most stick out of your body, usually an inch or less above the skin. The stoma will be red and moist like the inside of your mouth and it will have no feeling. Also, most stomas are slightly swollen for the first weeks after your operation, and then they shrink to their permanent size. Types of stoma. There are several types of stoma depending on the procedure that is used. First, as I said, is a colostomy. Okay, this is a colostomy here. A opening made to the exterior at the end from the colon. That's known as a colostomy, which is a stoma created with part of your colon to bypass the rectum. And in some cases, you might even have the lower part of the colon removed, leading to a permanent stoma. The colostomy can be temporary if your colon is just needs to heal. The next one is ileostomy, which can be seen in this diagram here. It's the ileum, which is brought out to the skin as an ileostomy. A stoma created using small intestine. The rectum is the most common type of temporary stoma, but can also be permanent. Indication for an ileostomy, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis or bowel cancer. And the third category or the third type is known as the urostomy, where the ureters are implanted into a isolated small segment of the ileum known as the ileal conduit. And then this is then brought out through the into the right side of the abdomen. This is urostomy. And this is usually done for bladder tumors or severe bladder injury, okay, which need cystectomy. Next, we come to the examination of a stoma. The site of a stoma gives clue to the type of the stoma. Okay, if situated in the left iliac fossa, it is probably a colostomy. Is situated in the right iliac fossa, it is probably a ileostomy. Spout. The spouted stoma will be an ileostomy or urostomy, as small bowel contents are in, irritant to the skin, whereas the stoma flush with the skin will be a colostomy. Consistency of the contents. Colostomy output is generally thick and sludgy like feces, whereas an ileostomy is waterier and more greener and the urostomy will produce urine. Number of lumens is an, another important uh, finding. Loop stomas will have two lumens, whilst the end stomas will have one lumen. Observe for any potential complications of a stoma such as parastoma hernia, prolapse, retraction, or infarction. 
check the surrounding skin for any evidence of erythema, ulceration, or fistulation. Okay, now we come to a bit more details in colostomy. Colostomies are made using the large bowel, as you can see in this diagram here. One of the landmarks of the colostomies is that they are found in the left iliac fossa, okay, because most of the pathology leading colostomy are in the left side of the colon. The contents of a colostomy should be solid as the feces have had time to travel through the colon, undergoing massive water reabsorption. So the stools are usually less water and more solid. Colostomies are positioned flush to the skin there's no spout in these colostomies because the enzymes present in the large bowel contents are less alkaline and therefore less irritating to the skin. The, the two ends of the colostomy may be brought up together as a double barrel. The distal one called it, is known as the mucus fistula, whereas the proximal one is the colostomy proper. Okay. This is a diagram of the classical left-sided colostomy with a stoma bag. This is the ileostomy with a spout, which is a couple of centimeters long. This is to pre prevent contact of the contents onto adjacent skin, causing irritation. This is a urostomy which is also located on the right side and this is the, the intestinal loop that is used as a conduit, ileal conduit to direct the urine from the ureters to the exterior. And uh, this is a colostomy on the left side. It is flush with the skin because the contents of feces are not erosive to the skin. Permanent end colostomy is a temporary end colostomy. Okay. Permanent end colostomies are often performed in cases of abdominal perineal resection of large rectal cancers leading to the end removal of the entire rectum. Okay, the entire rectum distal to the resection is removed. So the anus rectum and the distal sigmoid colon are removed. Thereby, you need a permanent end colostomy, permanent sigmoid colostomy at the left iliac fossa. Temporary end colostomies are done when, as the word says, it is temporary and there is chance that the distal segment can be re at a later date. Loop colostomies are often performed to protect the distal anastomosis. For example, a loop, a a loop will be brought to the skin surface and half opened. This allows the fecal matter to drain out of into the stomach bag without reaching the distal anastomosis. So let's say there is a tumor causing obstruction here. You can do a loop colostomy on the right side, thereby diverting and preventing the passage of these contents distally. Next we come to ileostomy. Ileostomies are created using the small bowel and are typically located in the right iliac fossa. Less water is absorbed in the small bowel, so the contents of the stoma bag tend to have a liquid consistency. Because the enzymes contained in the small bowel contents can irritate the skin, the bowel has a spout sticking out from the abdominal wall. This allows feces to drain without touching the skin. Okay, this is a diagram to show you. You use the terminal ileum as the ileostomy in the right iliac fossa.
Okay, this slide shows you the differences between the ileostomy and the colostomy. Ileostomy, most commonly in the right iliac fossa, and then the stoma has got a spouse. That means it just out from the surface of the skin so that this can enter directly into the uh, colostomy bag. On the other hand, the colostomy is located in the more commonly in the left iliac fossa and it is flat in surface. The surface is flat, uh, it's more flushed with the surrounding skin. Now, temporary versus permanent and ileostomy. Permanent ileostomies are typically created after a pen of protocolectomy for conditions such as extensive ulcerative colitis or familial adenomatosis polyposis coli. Whereas a temporary end ileostomy is typically created during the emergency bowel resection where it is considered unsafe to form an anastomosis with the remaining bowel at that time. Loop uh, ileostomy is again can be temporary most of the time. It's a temporary ileostomy created in the same way as a temporary loop colostomy with two openings and being visible outside. This is something like a double barrel uh, cost, uh, stomas. They are mainly used to protect the distal anastomosis. For example, with this, in this diagram here, uh, ileostomy is done if there is some anastomosis done in the distal colon or distal bowel. Then, to protect this anastomosis, a temporary ileostomy is done in the right iliac fossa. So this will divert the contents away from the large bowel, giving time for it to heal. Next is urostomy. Urostomy is the diversion of the urine to the exterior through the ileostomy. The urostomy is created after a cystectomy, which is the, uh, for complete removal of the bladder, and are typically located in the right iliac fossa. And ileal con conduit, that is a small segment of uh, ileal uh, small bowel, is used to root the urine out of the abdomen into this urinal bag. This involves a piece of ileum being resected, then attached to the skin with the spout protruding into the bag. The ureters are then attached to the other end of the bowel. The urine then drains via the piece of ileum, which is called the ileal conduit, into the stomal bag. Okay, you can see here, this is a ileal conduit here, small segment of small intestine, ileum, which is resected off the uh, small intestine and then one end is closed up, the other end is brought as a spout at the right iliac fossa, which is known as the uh, urostomy. The bladder is removed and both the ureters are implanted into the this small ileal conduit to be drained into the urine bag in the right iliac fossa and this is known as a urostomy. So here as a patient, as a urine bag here attached to the urostomy here, so it drains urine. Okay, these diagrams, this is a colostomy, this is a ileostomy, and this is a colostomy. You can see it's flat, flat, and this is called a spout. And colostomies can be anywhere along the line of the colon, but the most common is in the left iliac fossa. Okay, now we come to the complications of uh, stomas. First, irritation. Okay, the next complication is retraction, huh? stomal retraction. It is possible for the stoma to move inwards due to weight gain, scar tissue formation, or improper placement. 
Retraction makes it hard to attach the appliance and can also cause irritation and leakage. Often, accessory products may be used to correct this, uh, in, uh, to improve the retraction, but a new stoma might be needed in severe cases. The next complication is parastomal hernias, which is a frequent complication that happens when the intestine starts to press outward through the opening, and most of these cases can be treated conservatively. Necrosis or gangrene of the stoma happens when the blood flow to the stoma is reduced or cut off. This is usually a complication in the immediate uh, post-op period after surgery. Okay, these are some pictures to show you. Apart, this is a parastomal hernia. This is a stoma, parastomal Just beside that, where the bowel pushes its way through the defect created by the colostomy. Okay, here, parastomal uh, hernias. This is how it looks, a small parastomal hernia here, parastomal hernia. This is gangrene or necrosis of the, this partial gangrene, total necrosis of the stoma due to vascular compromise. And these two pictures show a normal, healthy uh, stoma, you see, which is pink in color, no areas of ulceration, there's no abnormal discharge, and the surrounding skin is normal. Okay, these are two ileostomies with spout, these two are colostomies with no spout. Okay, this is the uh, ileostomy, just with the uh, appliance which is being attached. You got a base plate and a stomal bag. Okay, this is the configuration of the, the stomas. This is the end colostomy or end stoma. Okay, and this is a loop stoma or loop colostomy. And this is the double barrel stoma or double barrel, double loop colostomy. Okay, here again it shows you the uh, double barrel stoma, this is the proximal end, this is the distal end. This is the loop stoma which has been opened up to reveal the proximal and distal openings. And this is a double barrel again, another double barrel uh, stoma. Okay, this I've shown you already. This is a, the appliance consists of a base plate and a Colostomy bag, which can be nicely fit into the base plate. Then sometimes they give you a strap to uh, attach it. Okay, these are various types of colostomy bags, and this is a base plate. Okay, nowadays colostomy bags come in very colors and uh, shapes, and easily they can be. Uh, hidden away in your waist or in your pocket and, and not noticeable uh, by, our, by others. Next, uh, we come to another important uh, new development in the management of colostomy and this is known as colostomy irrigation. People with colostomies may choose colostomy irrigation to regulate their bowel movements and cleanse the bowel regularly at a fixed time in the day. The process involves flushing the colon daily with water through the stoma so that you don't need to wear a colostomy bag all the time in between the flushings. In between irrigations, a cap covers the stoma so that the patient can comfortably carry on his work normally. The process of colostomy irrigation may take around roughly around one hour. And then of course, with time and practice, it, it can be done much faster than that. It is best to perform irrigation at the same time each day. 
then you may want to try irrigating at the same time of day. Typically, you had the bowel movements before getting the colostomy. So you choose a time uh, when you used to move your bowels before getting done uh, having the colostomy. Irrigation may be easier after a meal or a hot drink. And at times, abdominal pain, nausea may occur during the irrigation. And we mean that the water is flow is too fast or the water is too cold. Roughly six to eight weeks it takes for your bowels to be typically adjust and move bowels regularly at the uh, regulated time. Okay, this is how it's done. This is the patient with the colostomy. This is the irrigating irrigation bed which contains the say, warm water and this is connected by the means of this funnel here at the end of the tube into the colostomy. Okay, the funnel is pushed inside gently and then the irrigating fluid is running. And once the irrigating fluid is goes in, then it is drained out, outside through this long bag which is attached to the stoma appliance which is then can be left into the uh, toilet bowl. So the patient can get the whole thing done, irrigation done within the uh, convenience of their toilets. Okay, now I show you a short video on this nice, uh, very useful uh, colo uh, colostomy irrigation. Irrigation is a water enema that can be used for emptying the bowel if the stool is relatively firm. You can only use this method if your stoma is created from the very last part of your large intestine. You must never start using irrigation without having prior advice and training from a stoma care professional. It is recommended that training can begin no sooner than 10 days after surgery. Irrigation should not be done occasionally. It should be done routinely every 48 hours. Since irrigation takes up to an hour, your family members' routines of using the bathroom should be considered. To perform the irrigation procedure, you will need an irrigation bag to contain the water for the irrigation, a cone to be inserted in the stoma and lead the water into the stoma, a regulator to regulate the flow of water into the stoma, and a sleeve to be attached to the base plate and lead the evacuation of feces from the stoma to the toilet. In the following, the irrigation procedure is demonstrated when normally using an ostomy bag that is attached to a base plate by a plastic coupling. If you do not use such a system, you can irrigate by attaching a pressure plate to the skin with an irrigation belt. When you use the irrigation system, water will flow from the irrigation bag, through the regulator, and finally enter the stoma via the cone. Start by making sure that the flow regulator is completely closed. Connect the tube on the cone to the flow regulator. Fill the irrigation bag with approximately half a litre of lukewarm water. During the irrigation, you can sit or stand as you please. Hang the water bag so that the bottom is at shoulder height. The higher you hang the bag, the faster the water will enter your stoma. The temperature of the water should be between 36 and 38 degrees Celsius. This corresponds to 97 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Correct temperature of the water is indicated by a mark. Regulate the temperature of the water until the reading is between 36 and 38 degrees Celsius. Water that is hotter than 60 degrees Celsius will destroy the thermometer. 60 degrees Celsius corresponds to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Open the flow regulator and allow the water to flow through the tube to remove any air. When the tube is filled with water, close the flow regulator. The sleeve is connected to the base plate as follows. Ensure the lock ring is open. Press the sleeve and base plate together starting at the bottom. Run your fingers around the coupling on the outside of the sleeve from the bottom to the top. When a slight click is heard, the sleeve is securely positioned on the base plate. The sleeve may be turned to its optimal position. Then close the lock ring. When you hear a click, the sleeve is securely locked to the base plate. Place the end of the sleeve in the toilet. The sleeve must not reach the water in the toilet. Cut the length of the sleeve to the appropriate length if necessary. Now gently put your finger into the stoma to feel in which direction the cone should be inserted in order to follow the intestine. You might choose to wear a glove for this purpose. If necessary, lubricate the cone with water before use. Then insert the tip of the cone in the stoma through the top of the sleeve. Keep the cone in the right position in the stoma with one hand. You might want to wrap the top of the sleeve around the tube to avoid potential soiling. Open the flow regulator slowly. The flow of water can be regulated by adjusting the speed on the flow regulator or by gently adjusting the position of the cone in the stoma. Let the prescribed amount of water in over approximately 10 minutes, then stop the water flow. Inside the intestine, the water will provoke peristaltic movements, forcing the intestine to empty feces and water. Now remove the cone from the stoma. After removal of the cone, there might be a slight evacuation of water and feces. When you've removed the cone, roll the upper end of the sleeve and close the sleeve with the clip. During the next 20 minutes or so, water and feces will evacuate in portions. For the intestine to evacuate completely, wait another 20 minutes or so. If you wish, you can use the waiting time for other activities. Before moving away from the toilet, rinse the sleeve with water left over in the irrigation bag. Ensure that the bottom of the sleeve is clean before folding it up. Secure it with a clip, such as a clothes peg with a spring. You can now freely move around. When the evacuation is completed, unfold the sleeve and place the bottom of the sleeve in the toilet to empty the content. Remove the irrigation sleeve by unlocking the lock ring and gently pulling the tab upwards and outwards. Do not pull on the lock itself. Rinse the end of the sleeve as you flush the toilet. Do not flush the sleeve down the toilet. After removal of the sleeve, clean and dry the base plate as usual. You might also wish to change the base plate. Use a mini cap or a mini bag until next time you irrigate. To clean the cone of the irrigation set, detach the tube from the flow regulator. Clean it with soap and water and dry it. The rest of the irrigation set is cleaned with water and dried. Put a piece of folded toilet paper in the irrigation bag to absorb any moisture. Next we go through the examining of a stoma patient. Eh? Okay, introduction. 
is the first part is the same as any other procedure that you're going to uh, do on the patient washing of hand confirming the patient's name id and introducing yourself to the patient and also uh, most important to reassure the patient that you are going to cause no pain next you assess the stoma okay this you can be done by inspection inspecting the stoma for the site the number of lumens presence absence of spout and the contents of the effluent okay the site different types of stomas are typically located in specific sites on the abdomen colostomies are usually in the left iliac fossa iliostomies and urostomies are typically in the right iliac fossa then look at the number of lumens single or double it, this can help you to give clues when trying to determine the subtype of the stoma one lumen can be located and located in the rif is the end iliostomy or urostomy one lumen located in the left iliac fossa is an end colostomy two lumens located together in the right iliac fossa is a loop iliostomy and two lumens close together located in the lif is your loop colostomy okay then you look at the spout whether they're present or not present to differentiate between iliostomies urostomies and colostomies spout present it is either iliostomy or a urostomy sprout absent it is most likely a colostomy then the nature of the effluents colostomies tend to produce semi solid fecal effluents whereas the iliostomies produce liquid fecal effluent urostomies produce urine then have a careful look closer look at the skin surrounding the stoma inspect for the evidence of erythema tissue breakdown and or fistulation you also look for parastomal hernia which are quite common parastomal hernia is a different is a type of incisional hernia in which the abdominal contents produce produces through the abdominal wall defect related to the stoma Clinical features of parastomal hernia include enlargement of the stoma, bulging of an area uh, surrounding the stoma, increased size of the hernia when coughing and sneezing. It is reducible, normally is reducible, and in rare cases a loop of bowel can become trapped and get strangulated. Then look for the complications of stoma stomal infarction is a very uh, important complication that must be uh, detected usually occurs in the immediate post op period within the first few days so in the first few days a careful inspection must be done to make sure there's no stomal infarction stomal prolapse is another complication that uh, whether results in stoma appearing longer than normal the stoma length may increase when the patient coughs or strains and normalizes when the patient is lying down if the stoma remains prolapsed for a long period of time venous drainage can be impaired resulting in venous congestion and secondary ischemia stomal retraction is another uh, complication which can occur even after a long long time involve the stoma sinking below the level of the skin a retracted stoma has a concave bowl shaped appearance and the retraction causes poor back uh, stomal back attachment leading to frequent periosteal skin complication as described above stomal hemorrhage usually they are minor bleeding due to trauma uh, attained during the changing of back 
but if there's bleeding is more peri uh, significant bleeding from the mu mucocutaneous junction then urgent medical uh, help should be sought you mustn't forget that stomal bleeding may also indicate pathology within the gi tract such as malignancy and in conclusion concluding the examination you have to summarize what you've got from the patient and this is a typical summary which you can uh, example example of a typical summary which you can use it for your purpose okay we come to the end of the talk I just show you some pictures of parastomal hernia and this is a, a protective or a belt abdominal belt waist belt which can be used in, in, in treating or controlling parastomal hernias eh? where this hole here is where it is placed around the stoma this is a large parastomal hernia this is a moderate size parastelonania and this is a small one. Okay, we come to the end of today's talk on stomas. Hope it helped you to understand the topic better and hope to see you again in the next session. Thank you.